What's going on guys? It is Steve with Mouse Secrets and today we're coming to you with another video talking about Disney releasing their new um the pricing for annual passes for 2025 and as well as looks like the ticket prices were released too for single day tickets for the parks as well but um, I guess I'm kind of just talking right now about the annual pass prices going up again and again and again and again. Um, and if you guys are watching my video just recently, a few days ago, when I was talking about the lightning premiere pass, the new front of the line pass, the $129 up to like 430 bucks or whatever per person to get to the front of the line for, um, the lightning lanes at Disney. Um, I said, at that time, like if you think about it, like one of the best deals that Disney still gives, and I and I should have kept my mouth shut, <laughs> like they heard me speaking, but whatever, I should have kept my mouth shut. But um, no, I'm I'm, I'm joking. But um, one of the best deals that Disney still offers, even though the annual passes have gone up dramatically over ever since the pandemic, right? Since the pandemic, like reopening, the annual passes just keep going up and up and up and up and up and up and up. I personally still believe there's a, there's still a great value there. Like one of the last things that Disney still gives you like an awesome value. Like you could make the argument that, you know, the food isn't a great value anymore. Single day tickets are overpriced. You know, we're going to talk about that here in a second, like 200 bucks for a ticket to magic kingdom for the day. That's a lot of money it adds up quick. Um, of course, you know, now having to buy, instead of getting your free fast passes, you know, you have to buy your multi-lane tickets or soon to be your, um, premier lightning pass to get that you've got to be staying in a deluxe resort or higher or whatever so um one thing though that i think you could still make the argument even though they've gone up is that annual passes are still a great deal especially for folks that live here locally or if you travel to disney a lot during the year and um yeah you can definitely still find value in your annual pass but they are going up it's not a shock and i think I say this again. It's funny. It's so funny. Like this announcement came out this morning, just a few minutes ago, because I was just talking to my neighbor about this last night. And I said to him, I said, uh, it's still like a great deal. Annual passes are still a great deal, but what would you be willing to pay? Like how much higher would you go that it's not a great deal? Cause I still think like if you visit the parks regularly, if you go there weekly or, you know, monthly or something, so a lot of people down here go like every night or every day, like, it's still a good deal. I know it's the thing like, and so I think they know that and that they're just going to continually raise the price until they hit that threshold where folks do stop renewing. And maybe that's the goal. Cause there, you know, I think it's been said many, many times over and over again, there's a lot of annual pass holders. You know, we don't know what the exact number is. Dizzy doesn't share that, but you know, you can just see it when you're in the parks, um, on the days that, um, that block outs are in effect for most passes. Um, you'll notice that the parks are not quite as busy. Like there's, there's just a lot of annual pass holders that fill the parks, which is a good thing. I mean, you know, annual pass holders are generally spending some money. They're buying food and merchandise and that type of thing. But at the end of the day, I think like if they feel like they can just keep raising the prices and some people just fall off annual pass holders, some annual pass holders just fall off. They still make the same amount of money and the parks are less crowded. I don't know. Like what, you know, there's room to raise the prices. That's my whole thing. Like, and people are still going to find value in it. I just think like there's a lot of room to raise the prices. I think that I still think like annual passes could, they could go up a lot before they kind of level off or something. I think like Disney's just becoming more and more expensive across the board. And the thing that's slowly catching up to the cost of everything else at Disney are the passes and they are increasing and they have been increasing. But, um, I just think like, it's just going to keep going up and up. Like I, I still think like is a Florida resident, like it's a great deal that you can get a Disney annual pass, these lower tier passes. Remember if you're outside of the state of Florida, you can only get, what is it? The, I got to remember my names and credit pass. I believe like you can only get that. You've got to buy it up front. Still a great deal. Again, if you're coming from out of state and you travel here a lot, but for Florida residents having access to the pirate pass, pixie pass or whatever, and that you can do interesting financing for those passes. It's a great deal, right? Like, if they were to ever take away that interest fee, interest free um, payment plan or something for Florida residents, that would be a big, big bummer. I hope that never happens. But um, 
Yeah. So let's let's let, well let's look at the prices here. Hold on. Let's pull it up here. Let's see what what are we going up to? How much? Because actually I'm due for renewal. My household. Well, yeah. My house. Well, myself and my wife's annual passes are due for renewal in like two weeks or three weeks here, mid November. Child is not quite due for renewal. But um, yeah. So let's see what are we going up to? And of course, shout out to WDW News today for putting this article out here so we can kind of have it all broken down in a nice clean format. So Walt Disney World annual passes are increasing by. Up to a hundred bucks, so from thirty to a hundred dollars, depending on the pass you've got. So Pixie Dust is going up from four thirty nine to four sixty nine. Pirate goes from seven ninety nine to eight twenty nine. Sorcerer Pass makes a bigger jump, up what is that seventy nine dollars? And the Incredi Pass is the big one. That's so the Incredi Pass and the Sorcerer Pass are the ones that are making the bigger jump. Um, and the credit pass is the highest one that gets you no blockout dates. What do the blockout dates apply? Yeah, blockout dates apply on Sorcerer. I don't know that there's any, it's going to say if there's any changes. But yeah, here's the thing with the annual passes. One thing you got to keep in mind, you get free parking, you get the merchandise discount, and you get some hotel special rates for resorts and stuff. So again, it just comes down to like you have to decide if all of that's worth it. And I know that they just, they're taking that into account and I do believe that they 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 know that they know that the passes are still undervalued and that people are willing to pay for them, especially if you're able to do the monthly payment pay, plans if you're a Florida resident. So like the most basic pass, Pixie Dust. Um, well, I guess I can't break down the per month or per twenty five dollars per month for twenty. Okay, so they broke it down. So it's going to be four sixty nine. Or $25 per month at zero APR with a $200 down payment. So, you know, you make your $200 down payment and then you're paying 25 bucks a month. I mean, for Disney Plus and Netflix, you pay more than that a month. So if you live here, it's, I, I don't know. I, they, they, have, they still have room, I think, to continue to, I'm not going to say it. They're gonna, well, I am going to say it. They're going to continue to raise these prices on the APs for the foreseeable or whatever. They have room to go up. Um, the pirate one, 200 down. 205 down 57 bucks a month i mean then you're starting to get a little bit more expensive i mean more people just may continue to get pushed down to pixie dust like when this when the after before pandemic we always had the top tier pass post pandemic i mean i've downgraded i went from the top tier pass pre-pandemic to sorcerer now all the way down to a pirate i do pirate myself um yeah, I mean, I'm fine with the blockout dates. I talk about this on my channel a lot that if I get blocked out towards the end of December for Christmas, that's fine because I'm an AP holder at Universal Studios and I just go there for Christmas. I love Universal for Christmas anyway. Grinchmas is a lot of fun. But um, I still get my discounts. I still get my, my free parking. And, you know, those are the things that matter a lot for me too. But, yeah, I mean, I can't personally justify an accredit pass at this point. No, especially at fifteen forty nine. No, I do. I mean, I still don't think it's it's horrible if if you're going to use it enough that you're going to have access to Disney basically whenever you want. You have the keys to the kingdom. You can come and go as you please. Fourth of July, New Year's. That's the thing I think for me that stinks is that the, my pass. Those are the things I kind of miss out on that I wouldn't mind having. Like Epcot for New Year's is a blast. Um, Magic Kingdom blast. You know, for the holiday for New Year's. Um, missing out on fourth of july that kind of is a bummer or whatever but at the end of the day it's a cost worth cost versus reward and i just don't see it at this point upgrading it back to that high of a level but um so yeah my pass is going up depending on what i decide to renew for actually i think when i renew this time i'm going to renew and add water parks to my pass so maybe maybe the thing to do is you downgrade your pass if you're a florida resident again if you're out of state I'm sorry, you just have no choice. You've got to go with the Incredit Pass, and you're going to be paying an extra hundred bucks, which is a bummer. But if you're in Florida, maybe like you just start like thinking like, I downgrade my pass, but I add the water parks or something, which I don't have, and I think like we would probably benefit from that a little bit more. Um, issue that I run into now is with my child is that she's a f you know in school full time, so her pass blocks her out on the weekends and. Um, during the week, we have a hard time getting to the parks because she's in school. So I may actually have to up. I am going to have to do it. I'm going to up my child's back so that we can have weekends for her ticket. <sighs> Passes are going up. They're going to keep going up. That's the whole gist of this. Passes are going up. They're going to keep going up. Um, you know, woo, I lost I lost my Darth Vader. Come back, Darth. Um, 
Yeah, passes are going up. They're going to keep going up. Tickets. You know what? Can we look at tickets real quick? Okay, well, we will. Hold on one second. So, <laughs> we will look at ticket prices here in a second, like single-day tickets. But I do believe, like, that. yeah, annual passes are going to keep going up. No stopping that. Um, with the Premier Lightning Lane, I talked about this in my little video. My opinion on it is that it's just going to do nothing but raise the prices of multi, uh, multi-attraction or the multi lightning lane pass. I'm sorry. Multi lightning lane pass. I don't, there's too much, like there's too much light between the 20 bucks or 20 some dollars versus the 130 or something. So I just feel like automatically, cause you've got this huge gap in those, in the pay or the, uh, the amount. I just think that like, you know, your multi pass could easily go up to like 40 or something. And now you're closing that gap a little bit, but right now, like, that gap is too big. So I think that's just going to keep pulling up the price. Um, let me see. Our good folks at WDW News today, do they have something on the single day tickets? Let me see. There we go. Cool. Here we go. Okay. So Walt Disney World ticket prices are released. Magic Kingdom increased to $190, $199 on select dates. I thought it was already at that amount though. Weren't we already at like almost 200 bucks at Magic Kingdom at this point anyway? I don't know. I mean, I, obviously they, these guys know and I'm probably not. 100% right on that. But this says Magic Kingdom one day ticket uh, will be. Oh, let me bring it on the screen. Y'all can see it. I apologize. Hold on. There we go. So this is what I was just looking at. Uh, Walt Disney World ticket prices released for late 2025. Magic Kingdom increased $199 select dates. So mm, let's see. One day tickets are as follows minimum price $144 a ticket, maximum $199. Epcot minimum one twenty nine, maximum one one ninety four. Hollywood Studios one thirty nine, maximum one ninety four. I mean, you know, if you're coming during peak times, coming during the holidays, you're going to be dropping some cash on single day tickets. Hopefully, that's not the way you would want to visit the parks with single day tickets. But you know, some people do. Some people only come for a day, and maybe they go to Universal or they you know, go to the beach or something. They only want a one day ticket. But those are your dates for the one ninety nine tickets, one ninety nine price single day tickets. So right around Thanksgiving and, of course, the end of Christmas through New Year's. End of December through New Year's. Expensive, expensive time. Um, they have a nice chart that breaks it down. So you guys can take a look. at How much is Thanksgiving Day? Thanksgiving Day at Magic Kingdom is one ninety nine. Um, com- oh, there, this is the comparison chart. Okay, between 2024, 2025. So it went from 189 to 199. Christmas went, Eve went from 189 to 199. That's the bummer, too, about not having the pass, the uh, top level annual passes. Christmas Eve is a lot of fun at the Magic Kingdom. It's kind of it's kind of cool. People are a lot of times like walking around in their Christmas pajamas, whatever. Okay, so it looks like it's like a $10 increase, right? Is that all of them pretty much? Like, well, no, Epcot's going up 50. $15 on Thanksgiving, $10 on Christmas. So Epcot has a New Year's Eve they're going up. I'm not sure. I'm not surprised that Epcot's going up New Year's Eve. That's like the premier thing to do or premier park destination for New Year's Eve in Disney in Orlando. Um $10, $10, $10 that's for Hollywood Studios, $10, $10 across. Okay, so 10 bucks for all the parks are increasing single day, $15 for some days at Epcot. So, no surprise there. Yeah, the one last great value at Disney, the annual passes, how long will it remain a great value? I'm actually curious. Let me know down in the comments. Here's my question to you guys. If you're an annual pass holder, how much more are you willing to pay for your ticket? I'm just curious. Like, what's your breaking point? Like, what is the price of your annual pass? What does the price of an annual pass have to hit for you that you're like, I'm not renewing or I'm downgrading from where I'm at? That's the decision I made a couple years ago was I'm not going to renew for the highest level annual pass. And we're at Disney all the time. We have a Disney YouTube channel. You know, we work Disney adjacent. Like, and I made the decision that it's too expensive for three people to have that in credit pass or whatever. So, and now if I was getting that for all three of us for my household, that's an extra 300 bucks for the year for all of our tickets. So I, I mean, there's still a lot of value in that pass. Like we just said, you got new year's, you've got Christmas, you got the holidays, you got all of the 4th of July fireworks and stuff. So you miss out on those things, which is really a bummer. If you got the universal pass, you can kind of offset it, but not having those blockout dates or using your universal pass on those blockout dates. But what does it have to hit to really make you rethink either buying an annual pass or downgrading an annual pass? And here's the thing too, and I'll just throw this out there because I want to wrap this video up. But um, 
We always talk about the value and the cost of the universal annual pass, but don't kid yourself. Those are going to be going up a lot too with the, uh, with the addition of Epic universe. Um, so yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. That's all. I ain't got nothing else to say. We're going to have to work a little harder. I guess every, we're either going to, we're going to have to work harder and get second jobs to maintain our APs, but it's a bummer. And they know it's the last great value that Disney offers and it's slowly going to continue to erode. I don't even know if we can... Call, yeah, I still call it a great value. Even with the little increase on my annual pass that I have, it's still a great value for the way that I use mine. But, you know, we dine at Disney. I like the discount. We buy merchandise. Um, and we're at the parks a lot. We're at Disney a lot. But anyway, that's a wrap on the video. Let me know down in the comments what do you all think. How do y'all feel about not only the APs going up, but the single day tickets? Because some folks do use the single day tickets. It's expensive. Coming during the holidays, my family would be spending six hundred dollars then for a ticket to Magic Kingdom. If I had, if I was coming just for like a day or two, so six hundred bucks for Magic Kingdom during the holidays. Probably be buying multi lane. That's probably gonna be what like thirty, thirty five per person. It's expensive. And we haven't even gotten food. We haven't gotten anything. We haven't gotten, <laughs> we haven't paid for parking yet. You got to pay. For, I always forget about that. You got to pay for your parking. Like, woo, expensive. Disney's expensive. Okay. Take care, guys. Have a great one. Make sure you sub to the channel notifications around. We'll see you in the next video.